Hello and welcome to this My Theme Shop video screencast. In this video, we're going to be doing a full setup and run through of all of the settings for the newspaper theme, which is a beautiful and elegant WordPress theme built for content rich sites. Now, before we start, you'll want to make sure you've got a good knowledge of WordPress. And if you don't have this already, then head over to mythemeshop.com slash WordPress 101. And here you're going to find a full video library of video tutorials, giving you all the basics on WordPress. And if you've already uh, got some WordPress skills and want to just make them sure they're up to speed, then check out WordPress 201, which is advanced WordPress tutorials. And you'll find that just at the bottom of that page. Once you're ready to get started then, you want to go to the My Theme Shop member area at mythemeshop.com slash go slash member. And here you'll find your active premium resources. You want to scroll down until you find um, newspaper and then click to expand that. You can then under download, press theme files. You can save that onto your computer, just click save there. And now from your WordPress dashboard, you want to go to appearance and then click on themes. And from there, you can add new theme and then you want to upload theme. Here you want to choose the zip file you've just downloaded. Select that there, press open and then install now. And WordPress is going to upload and then install the theme for you. Once that's done, you just need to press activate and you'll have the theme activated on your site. We're now ready to get started. And the first thing we want to do is head straight over to the theme options. You'll find this under appearance and then the theme options. This will take you to the mission control center for the theme. And this is where you can control all of the options to do with setting up your site. Now we're gonna run through all of these one by one to show you a complete setup for the newspaper theme. The first thing we're going to do though is head to the import and export tab. And then here we have the option to import the default content and settings and theme options that are used with the demos that you'll find on mythemeshop.com. You'll see with the newspaper theme, you've got five different options and you can click on these links in order to get to the demos to see what those look like. I'm gonna import the default layout and you have the option just to import the theme options, to import the theme options and the widgets as well, or to import the theme options, widgets and content so you can get your site very quickly set up. I'm going to do this third option here and import the theme options, widgets and content onto my site. If you've already got content on your site, then you might want to um, just import the theme options and widgets, although the theme does give you the option to remove the content once you are done setting up. So I'm just going to click this. It will ask if I'm sure I can press OK. And then all of that's going to import onto my site. And we're going to have all of those default options added to my site. Now, before we get started, as I already have some content on my site, I'm going to use the regenerate thumbnails plugin in order to make sure that all of the thumbnails and images used on the site are the correct image dimensions. I've got this installed already, so I'm going to go to Tools and then click Regenerate Thumbnails in order to load this up. But if you don't have the plugin, then you want to go to Plugins and then press Add New and then do a search for Regenerate Thumbnails and just press Regenerate All the Thumbnails. You can let that run in the background and we can now have a look at setting up the general settings on the Theme Options page for our site. Now, the first thing you're going to see is your logo. And here you have the option to upload your own logo onto your site. I'll just remove this default one in order to show you how this works. You can just press on browse and here you'll get to the WordPress media library. You have the option to either choose any of the images you've already uploaded, or if you choose upload files, you can just drag and drop or select files that you've already got on your computer. Here I can select the logo I've got for my site, just select it there, press open, and then once that's uploaded, press select image. The theme is then gonna add that into the logo area. And I've also got the same option for my favicon, my touch icon, which is used on iOS 2 plus and Android 2.1 plus, as well as my Metro icon, which is used on Internet Explorer 10. You can also add your own Twitter username here, and this can just be your username. So mine would be my theme shop team, as well as your feed burner URL. And you might want to do this if you want extra analytics from your RSS readers. So you want to add in the full URL here. So feeds.feedburner dot com slash my theme shop would be mine here. You can sign up for a free feed burner account at feedburner.com. You can also add any code that you might use in the header. For example, Google Webmaster Tools Verification, Buy Sell Ad Script, Bing Webmaster Center, and so on. And the same for the footer. This can include Google Analytics, Stack Counter, and more. You also have the option to change your pagination type. 
Now you'll see you have four options to choose from. The default is just a next and previous. So when a user gets to the bottom of the page, it's just gonna have two buttons for next and previous content. You can choose numbered, which goes through one, two, three, four, and so on. Or you can have an AX load more or an AX infinite scroll. I'll set this to load more, save those changes, and then show you what that looks like on our site. I'll just refresh my site here and we'll see we've got the standard homepage with all the content that we just imported. But when you get to the bottom of the homepage, you've got this button to load more posts. You'll see this loads more posts without leaving the page by just by clicking on this button here and that's using the AX technology. You also have the option to change that to an infinite scroll so the extra content will load the second the user gets to the bottom of the page. Just so users can access the footer, I'm just gonna leave this with a load more button. That's a really nice way of improving your user experience for users on your site. You can also enable AX Quick Search. So if we just turn this on and then save, um, and we refresh our site, you'll see that if we do a search, we can start typing here, um, but the search results are going to display immediately, and you don't have to click through to the search page. And this is using, again, the AX technology in order to make your user experience just that little bit smarter. So that's what the AX uh, Quick Search does. You can also turn on or off the responsive design. So if your users are accessing on mobile or tablet devices, then they're going to get a specific version of the website built for those devices. If you don't want that, you can turn that off here. You'll probably want to leave that on. You can also turn on or off right to left language support. So if you're using a language that uses right to left instead of left to right, then you can enable that here. Finally, if you're using the WooCommerce plugin, you can enter the number of products that will display on the shop page, and you can just enter a number here in order to change that. Once you're done making all those changes, you'll want to save those changes, and next we can have a look at the Performance tab. This contains performance-related options which can help speed up your website, and this is a really unique feature of the theme. You have the option to enable or disable prefetching. This works in modern browsers so that if the user is on a home page, then single pages will load faster, and vice versa, if the user is on a single page, then home page will load faster. So this is for modern browsers, and you probably want to have this on. You can also turn on or off lazy loading. This will delay the loading of images outside of the viewports, that's the area of the screen you can actually see, until the user scrolls to them. This is a really useful way of improving the loading speed of your site so that users can initially get on your site faster, making sure the extra content, so the images are loading as they need them rather than all at once. This can also reduce your server resources. So you also have additional options here. So you can turn on or off the lazy loading of featured images. So you might want to make sure your featured images load immediately, but your post content images are lazy loaded. Um, I'll just turn it on for all of these just to show you how this works. I'll save those changes. If I refresh my site, you can see that content that we can actually see loads immediately, but if we scroll down, then extra images are loading only as we get to them. So that's the lazy loading in action. You also have the option to turn on or off async JavaScript. So this will just make sure all your JavaScript downloads at once and can improve your page download speed. You can remove verb parameters from CSS and JavaScript file calls, and this may improve the speed in some browsers which do not have caching files in their parameters. And also, if you've got the WooCommerce plugin installed, you can optimize WooCommerce scripts, and these are all just on or off toggles. Finally, a caching plugin can increase your page download speed dramatically. We'd recommend using either W3 Total Cache or WP Super Cache. And these are both free plugins which you can install just by clicking these links. You want to make sure you save your changes once you are done, and we can now have a look at the styling options. Under this tab, you're going to have the options to control the visual appearance of your theme, including colors, layouts, and patterns. First, you have the option to choose your color scheme. Now, newspaper lets you have unlimited color schemes for your theme styling, and you can get to that just by pressing on this color picker here. Here you have options to all of the colors on the entire color spectrum, including different tints, as well as these blacks, whites, and then all the different presets down here. So you can get to any of these and select your own. So we might change it from that nice blue, um, perhaps to a red here, and you can also change the tint here. So I might make that a stronger red. Save those changes, and we'll see if we refresh our homepage, we can change immediately from this primary blue color to this primary red color. And you're gonna see that reflected throughout the design elements on the site. So you can make sure this really reflects your brand and gets the look that you want. 
You can also change the default sidebar position on your site. You can set this universally here, but also override it for individual posts in the post editor. So changing that from left to right is very simple. You can just uh, make those changes, save and refresh your site. And you will see if we load up a page with a sidebar on it, then we've got the sidebar now on the left hand side. You also have the option to change your site background. You can set a background color, pattern and image. You can set the color. Again, you've got this familiar color picker. Um, it's the same as before. You can select any of those colors, but you can also choose one of these preset backgrounds. So you might choose a nice subtle background here. Um, or you can upload your own image and you can just press browse to get to the WordPress media library and upload your own image here. And that also has the options to add repeat attachment, background position and size, as well as turn on or off a parallax effect. And finally, you can choose to have a gradient and you can choose between two colors here um, and choose the direction of the gradient as well. I'm just going to put this on a subtle pattern. So if we make that change, save those changes. And if we head back to our site's homepage, then we'll see that we've got this nice background pattern in the background here. You also have the option to add your own custom CSS to further customize your theme. This will override the default CSS used on your site and you can just type this in here. If you're making any advanced changes, then you'll want to use a child theme and we'll have a look at those later on in the video. Finally, you have the option to add a light box. You can turn this on in order to add a stylized pop-up that allows visitors to view larger versions of images without leaving the current page. So with this on, if a user clicks on an image on your site, it's going to just pop up on the actual page rather than taking them to a separate page. Again, that's a really nice little user interface tweak. Once you're done, you want to save those changes and next up we can have a look at the header options. Here you can control the elements of your header section. That includes the background color. Again, if you click on this, you'll see you've got a color picker. So we can see currently we've got this uh, gray going on here. We could change this to perhaps a bolder color. We can make that match the default color we've got on our site. So if I save those changes, you'll be able to see just how quickly you're able to make these changes with the newspaper theme. And you can now see we've got that bold red there. You can enable or disable a floating navigation menu. So you'll see at the moment, if I scroll down the site, then the top navigation comes with me as I scroll. If I turn this off, however, um, and save those changes, um, then you'll see that if we scroll down the page, then the navigation is just going to stay there and will not scroll with you. So that's the floating navigation menu option. You can also turn on or off the logo. So this is default on, but you can turn this off if you would like, as well as the navigation menu and the social buttons in the header. So these are these items here and you've got the option to turn all of those off. You can also add in social links here. So that's your Twitter username and Facebook link. And you can just type those in there. You can choose to show the search form in the header as well as show the header post list. Um, so that's this section here. You can turn whether that's on or off and choose to display random posts, popular posts or latest posts as well as the color there. Once you're done making all of those tweaks, you'll want to make sure you save your changes. And next up, we can have a look at the homepage. Here you can control the elements of the homepage. First up, you have the option to enable or disable the homepage featured post area. So that's this section here displaying those featured posts. Um, you can choose whether that's on or off. And if you have this on, you can choose which categories to display. You can just click in the box here in order to load up the categories that you have available on your site and you can choose the ones that you want to add. You can get rid of these as well as add them back in again or if you just want to select all there's a button for that there. You can also choose the category colors and images and this will allow you to customize the colors used and images used for specific posts in specific categories. So currently these are all set to latest posts but I can change this to any of my categories here. Um, so I'll just change this to featured and then if we change the color here and um, perhaps back to this blue and then we've got an image added in already and press OK. Make sure we save those changes and if we refresh our site then we'll see that um, posts in the featured category on the homepage are now going to have this different blue color here. 
You can add as many of these as you like and you can just press add category color in order to do this. You can choose between all of your categories, select a color, add an image if you would like to. You can also remove these um, just by pressing uh, delete category color here. So I'll just change this so we've got the two, the latest post and featured displaying here. You can show or hide the popular category area which displays below your posts on the homepage. You can change the title here as well as the categories to display. So I'll change this so we've got um, perhaps featured in one and then the next we can have uh, design and then we'll have one with latest posts and then the final one can be business. Press OK, save those changes and if we have a look at our site, um, if we just refresh here then we'll see we've got below the homepage post area we've got these four categories displaying here and you can see that the ones um, with images are displaying there as well. You also have the option to customize the homepage post meta information. You can customize the post meta info you want to display on the homepage as well as what is displaying. So you'll see at the moment we've got the category, comment and then author and you can drag and drop in order to move these around or you can disable any of these just by dragging and dropping from the enabled to the disabled box. So we might want to just enable two of those um, if we just refresh our site having saved those changes. We'll see that um, we've now only got the author and the category and those are displaying with the author first and then category second. You can drag and drop in order to customize these how you want. Once we're done, you'll want to save those changes and now we can have a look at the homepage tab section. This allows you to customize the homepage tab layout, which is the latest and popular post tabs on the homepage. So that would be these two here. You'll see you can click between the two. You have the option to choose the homepage layout style, so whether this goes all the way across or has the sidebar as well. So currently we've got ours going all the way across, but if we add in the sidebar, um, you'll see that this uh, just narrows the content area and increases the space for the sidebar. I'm just going to put this back to all the way across. You can customize the homepage tabs if you can have them on or off, as well as the order they're displaying in. And again, you can drag and drop in order to customize the order they're displaying. You can have the homepage pagination off or have the AX load more button, which is what we selected earlier, as well as select the trending tab title icon. Um, you can just click on this in order to load up all of the images available, all of the icons you can add in here. And you can also search in order to find uh, ones that you are looking for. You can add in the title for the trending tab and also choose whether to sort by post views, comment count or date. You can customize the number of posts that display in the trending section and you can just use these numbers in order to add that. You can select a number of days to have sorted your trending post by and you can just set this to naught in order to disable it or you can specify a time frame so that would be 90 days. It's the same for latest tab, you can choose the icon to display as well as the title and the number of posts. So we'll save those changes and refresh our site and we'll see that we've got um, back to full width here as well as those icons and then that's the order we selected as well. You'll see with trending we've got nine posts displaying here and then the AX load more button. Next up we can have a look at the footer. From this tab you can control all of the elements displaying in the footer section of your site. As before, you've got the option to customize the background color. So we'll see here, we've got this dark gray. Um, we might want to just change this to a slightly, uh, perhaps darker gray, more like a black here. We can change the tint here as well. Um, we can enable or disable the footer widget section. So that's um, these four widget areas here. We'll get onto widgets later on as well and look into them in detail. We've also got options for the footer sponsors section. Um, so here we've got as seen on and as you can see here we've got as seen on and then these logos here. You can add in the sections in order to add the logos for each of those. So you can add a title if you would like and then just drop in the image and a link if you would like to there. You can add as many of these as you like as well as delete them if you don't need them as well as drag them around. So if we just change this order here, save those changes, I'll just show you that on the site what that looks like. You can see that on the footer, we've got this um, as seen on the sponsor area. Those have been changed around there. 
Finally, you have the option to customize the copyright text. So here it says theme by my theme shop. You can remove this or add it in if you would like. And if you want to get a percentage kickback on the sales you refer to my theme shop, then you can check out the my theme shop affiliate program, which you'll find on mythemeshop.com in order to get a percentage of each sale that you refer to my theme shop. You want to make sure you save those changes once you are done. And next we can have a look at the single posts. Under this setting, we've got the option to control the appearance and functionality of the single posts. This includes customizing the layout of single posts. You have the option to choose whether your post content related posts and tags are displaying and in what order. So you'll see we have post content and related posts here. And if you expand related posts, we have the option to choose the taxonomy used to sort related posts. So you can choose between categories and tags. You can also choose the number of related posts. You can add in your tags below that as well. Um, just to show you how this works, we might rearrange our posts so that we have related posts first and then the post content. So if we just um, refresh our site, having saved those changes, you'll see we've now got related posts first and an add area next to that and then the actual post content displaying. So newspaper gives you a lot of customizability options to do with your posts here. You can also customize as with the homepage, the meta info you want to display. You've got four options here, the categories, author name, comment count, and date. And you can drag and drop in order to choose which ones are displaying here. You might just drop in the date um, and have that displaying second, save those changes. And if we refresh our site, we will see that the meta info is added in here. We've got the category, date, and then post author there, which is as we have selected here. You can choose to show or hide the featured image on single posts as well as breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs are just these little items here, which make your site a little bit more user friendly by showing the parent pages from the site, parent categories of where the post has come from. You can choose to have the header on or off on posts, as well as to show popular posts, random posts, related posts, and latest posts in that header if you do have it on. If you're using related posts in this section, you can choose whether to have those sorted by categories or tags. And you can also choose whether to have the recommended post on. That would be this section here, which recommends a post after each bit of content. You can have that on or off. You can also choose whether to have that sorted by categories and tags as well. You can show or hide the author box as well as the write for us button. And if you've got the write for us button on, you've got options to change the text as well as the link. You can choose to highlight comments by the author as well as show the date in comments. So that'll be the comments section here. All author comments will be highlighted and you can show the date on these as well if you have these options on. Make sure you save your changes once you're done looking at those. And next we can have a look at social buttons. From this tab, we can enable or disable the social sharing buttons used on single posts. So you'll see at the moment, if we scroll along the post here, we've got these social buttons floating with the post. And these are the buttons that are displaying. We've got Facebook Like, Twitter, Google+, Pinterest, LinkedIn, and StumbleUpon, as well as Facebook Share. Now you can drag and drop these as well as disable them in order to customize what is displaying. So I might just make these changes here, um, save those. And if I refresh the post, then you'll see those reflected on my site. We can see we've now got fewer of those social sharing buttons displaying. You can choose to have the social buttons in the footer on or off. And so if we scroll down here, you'll see what these are the social buttons. And you can also choose what it is displaying and in what order. So again, you can drag and drop these in order to move them around. And if you expand each of these, you'll find you can change the title, the icon. You can just do a search for the social media site you want to add there, as well as the background color and a link to your profile. You can have as many of these as you like. And as you'll be familiar with this, with this user interface, you can delete those as well. So if we just want to get rid of Tumblr, for example, we could do so. If we save those changes and refresh our site you'll see that um, we've now got one fewer of those buttons displaying in the footer. Next up, we've got ad management. Now here with the ad management panel, you can control everything to do with adverts without the need for separate plugins. You've got two ad areas available with the newspaper theme. One is below post title and the other one is below post content. And you can just paste in your ad code from AdSense, Buy Sell Ads or other ad service providers into these two boxes. 
You also have the option to show adverts after a certain number of days that posts have been published. You might want to do this if you want to hide adverts from your regular visitors, but make sure they're displayed for, say, search engine visitors later on. So you can change this perhaps to a week just by putting a seven in there, and that will hide the adverts for seven days until after the post is published. If you want to disable this feature, you can just set that to naught, and it's the same for the second advert area there. You want to save your changes once you've added in your adverts and next we can have a look at custom sidebars. For this section as well as the typography widgets and menus we've got fuller more detailed videos available on mythemeshop.com specifically for each of these settings but we'll just take a brief look through these now. Now with the custom sidebars you have full control over your sidebars. You can manage the sidebars and select a custom sidebar for each section of your site as well as select a custom sidebar on a per post basis in the post editor. You can add sidebars, um, for example we might add a search sidebar here um, just by adding in these here and you can add as many of these as you like just by pressing add sidebar. So I'm just going to show you what this looks like with one. I'll just save those changes in order to refresh these settings here. And then if we have a look here, you'll see we have options for all of the different areas of our site. That includes the home page, single post, single page, archive, all the different types of archive, search, 404, and for the WooCommerce plugin as well. Now for each of these, you can choose the type of sidebar you want to display. You can choose the default, the search sidebar, which is the custom sidebar we've just added, and for single posts and single pages, you can also choose by default to have no sidebar, but you're also able to change these in the post editor on a per post basis. So we're going to apply our search sidebar to the uh, search pages, for, so for search results, we can apply that here and press save changes. You can apply the sidebar to as many areas as you like, um, and doing so will add an extra widget area under appearance and then widgets. So you'll see we have the standard sidebar, but for the search sidebar, we've now got this extra widget area added. I'll just uh, transfer one of these widgets over here just to show you what that looks like. So if we refresh a page on our site, you'll see that we've now um, not got that widget displaying on the standard sidebar. But if I just do a, a search here, and then hit return, you'll see we've now got a custom sidebar displaying here, and that's got that widget that we've just dropped in. So this allows for really extensive customization with your sidebar. And you can, as I mentioned, you can add as many of these as you like, and you can apply the same sidebar area to multiple areas on your site. As always, you want to make sure you save your changes once you are done. And next up, we can have a look at the navigation. Clicking on this link will bring a link to the WordPress menu editor and we can just load this up in order to manage our menus. This is the native WordPress menu editor and this allows you full customization drag and drop over your menus. You can create a new menu here or edit an existing menu. On the left hand side you're going to find all of the uh, items to add to your menu and if you just click view all on this you can access all of your pages as well as posts, custom links and categories. You can also search for these if you're looking for something specific. So I'll just add a category in here just to show you what this looks like. Um, we just want to tick the one we want to add and press add to menu. You can move any of these around um, in order to customize how they are displaying. As well as if you expand any of these, you can change the text that displays, title attribute, any extra CSS classes you want to add as well as an icon, which is optional. And again, you can search to find those. Um, you can remove menu, so here we've got a duplicate, so we can just press remove in order to do that. And if we save those changes, that's going to save the menu, but we now need to apply it to the site. And to do that, we just go to manage locations, and you'll see we've got the menu locations here. So primary, we've got the main navigation displaying here. But you can also choose a separate menu for mobile devices, um, perhaps if you want to simplify your menu for users on mobile devices. So we can just apply a different menu there, save those changes, and if we have a look at our site, you'll see we've now got that extra featured item added to the menu, and we've removed one of those general items as well. So that's the menus. Um, as I mentioned before, there's a full video on how to do the menus. If you are interested in that, you'll find that on mythemeshop.com. Next then we can have a look at the typography options. Here you can control all of the fonts used on your site. You can choose between the 17 WebSafe standard font sets or the over 600 fonts available in the Google Font Library. For all of these you've got 
options for all of the different fonts used on your site. So I'll just show you what this looks like with a navigation font, but it's the same for all of these different areas. You can expand this in order to choose between the web safe fonts, or once you've gone past those, you'll find the Google Font Library fonts. You might want to head over to this link here to the Google Font Library itself in order to choose the font you want. And then from here, you can just do a search for that. So I'll search for a font here. Um, we'll find one here. We might change this to Roboto Slab. And you'll see once we've done that, we get a preview displaying here. You can customize the font weight. So we might go for a heavier font weight here um, and also the size of the font in pixels. You can choose the color. And again, this brings up a color picker. And if you click on more, you've got some additional options here, including the CSS selectors applied, any additional CSS and a full Mac font. Here you can choose between any of the web safe fonts. And this just provides a fullback in case the Google font library can't be loaded. So I'll save those changes. And if we refresh our site, you'll see the navigation text has been changed um, from this font here, Roboto to Roboto slab with the heavier font weight. And as I mentioned, it's the same for all of these different fonts and you can customize all of these. At the bottom, you'll find options. If you're using a language using non-Latin characters, then you can just tick these in order to load the additional character sets. But note, this isn't going to be available for all fonts. Once you're finished, make sure you save your changes. And next up, we can have a look at the import and export tab. Now you'll remember that we had a look at this earlier, but there are actually some additional options here as well as the preset options. Below that, you have the option to import and export your options code. If you click on this, this is going to generate an export for all of the options code you've selected in the theme options. This is really useful if you're transferring sites or if you just want to create a backup. In order to import that code, you can just press import code and then paste it in and press import in order to do that. Finally, on this section, you have the option to create a child's theme. This is really useful if you're making advanced code changes to your site, but don't want to have those changes overwritten when you're upgrading your theme. This is for advanced users only, but if you are making extensive changes to your site, especially to do with code, then you'll want to do this. You can just add in a name here. So we might just go for newspaper child and then press create child theme. The theme is automatically going to create that for you. And if we just press save changes, you'll then be able to go to appearance and then themes and then activate the child theme. And from there, you'll be able to make all of your changes and have them future proof against upgrades. The final thing to have a look at then is the widgets. And we can get to that by going to appearance and then clicking on widgets here. This loads up the WordPress widget manager. On the left hand side, you've got all of the available widgets for the theme that includes custom widgets built specifically for the theme. And you'll find these with the MTS my theme shop prefix here. On the right hand side, then you have all of the widget areas and you can just drag and drop the widgets you want to display into the widget areas you want them to display in. This includes any custom widget areas that you've created, as well as any you've selected in the theme options. So these are the footer widget areas here. So you can add any of these widgets into the widget areas. So for example, we might want to display recent posts and we can just drag and drop this in order to display. Once you've dragged and dropped, you'll find the option to add any specific options here, including the title with this widget in particular, number of posts, title length, thumbnails and post date and so on. You can press save changes and immediately those changes will be made on your site. So if we just load up a page with a sidebar here, then we'll be able to see that we've got this recent post added here. You can drag and drop in order to rearrange your widgets. So if we want to have social icons first, we can do so here, just drag and drop. WordPress will save when you make those changes with dragging and dropping. And we can see immediately that is reflected on our site. You can also move widgets between widget areas. So we can move this recent posts uh, perhaps to the footer here. And if we do that, and we'll see that saves automatically. If we just refresh our site. Now when we scroll down to the footer and we've got these recent posts displaying here, you'll see that doesn't fit ideally. So we can again map these in order to get them displaying how we want. We might, for example, uh, put the recent posts into the sidebar widget, this custom sidebar that we have created earlier. You can also remove widgets just by expanding and then pressing delete if you would like to which is a really powerful section of the WordPress theme experience. And you might want to spend some time just checking out which widgets are available and how they can best improve your site.
So that concludes our look around the newspaper theme. As I mentioned, it's a beautiful, and elegant WordPress theme, and hopefully with this video, you've got it fully set up on your site now. If you do run into any problems, then head over to community.mythemeshop.com and someone will be more than happy to help you out. Hope this video has been helpful, and thank you very much for watching. Thank you.